folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and this is part number four of the rack and pinion in fact what was intended to be the rack and pinion but we ended up doing a lot more work on this mgb gt and you can see this in part one two and three but before we start with part number four i need to give you a small correction to part number three one of the viewers uh, tim contacted me and informed me that I had it all twisted that the cross member um, for a chrome bumper is fitted with a small bolt in the front and the back and the rubber bumper has a large bolt or stud in the front and a smaller one in the back and I just stated it the opposite in the video so yes Tim thank you so much for that you're absolutely right uh, that was my mistake and in this episode we go in to install the full front suspension so the lower wishbone these are the ones that we have reconditioned in part number two the Costello suspension in the top, we're going to install the uprights but also modify or change the bushes to polyterrain bushes. Uh, we'll install the brake uh, calipers and of course new brake pads. We'll also will install the anti-roll bar and finally we'll connect the tie rods of the rack and pinion towards the uh, uprights which is this point right here. So there's quite a few things we're going to do in this episode. What we're not going to do is to do the wheel alignment. Uh, that's going to be a separate video altogether. So let us start with the front suspension. And the front suspension on this car is slightly different than on a standard MGB GT or MGB for that matter. The spring, well, this is a new spring or a fairly recent new spring, so we don't need to do anything else with that. We just cleaned it up. That can go back in. But the main difference that we have is the Costello suspension. This is this upper part right here that fits like this. And this is like a new wishbone on the top. See, this acts like a wishbone and it replaces the complete top part of your standard MGB GT or MGB. Um, it's called Costello and it's an upgrade you can get for your car. It's certainly worthwhile doing it. It really makes a hell of a difference in road handling. So we'll need to install this part and we also have to install then the completely reconditioned um, lower wishbone together with a brand new pivoting point. So we're going to start with those two parts first, installing the uh, lower wishbone and then we'll install the Costello suspension on top of that. And then uh, we go in to install the spring and that's going to be a little bit tricky. Because so the lower wishbone is mounted with its pivoting point towards the cross member with four bolts. And that's all there is to it. So I don't think I need to show you very much on how you need to bolt that down. All right, so let's put that up. I'm just gonna hold it for now with the nut. And nobody is saying anything? This thing is upside down. So I have to take it back off. Ah, oh, Steve, you know, that stuff happens sometimes to me. So if you think you're the only people that have this problem sometimes, not really. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> this is funny. I had these questions before when people say, oh, Steve, everything seems to work fine always with you. But reality is, not really. All right, I think this will be a lot better, will it? So let's put it in the right way now. <laughs> this was funny. So uh, let's put it to torque. So now that the lower wishbone is connected to the cross member, uh, I still need to tighten up these nuts here on the pivot. And that is around 80 Newton meters, but I am not gonna do this one right now um, because I'm gonna put in the spring first uh, and then I will tighten those up and put the split pin through it because you need to put a split pin in. But overall, this feels already quite good and solid. So here's our Costello suspension. 
goes in there. You might notice that I haven't locked down everything yet. And that's just because I still have to fit the upright. So now it's time to install the spring and the spring should be compressed when you install it. So normally you have clamps for a spring. I don't have any, so I'm going to do it slightly different. Um, I'm going to install the spring, first of all, on the top pocket, make sure it's in. And then I'm going to put it in the bottom side. And let's see if we can get this properly in here. Yeah. And then I'm going to use a jack to jack that gently upwards. And that should just work. So let's see if we can get this done. Um, hopefully it works. But that's a method I've done before in other cars, so I have really not a lot of doubt that it will work. You just want to make sure that the spring fits properly. All right. So let's push that. Stay away from the spring, you never know. But luckily there is a lip in the pan that holds it. And that seems to work just fine. Once I got the shock installed, then I should be good. Let's move it up. Almost there. Let's see. Yep, that starts to look like it. There we go, bolt is in. So now we can lock it and then release the jack and we should be good. About ready to start installing the upright. All right. So before we go in to install the upright, uh, we want to change actually the bushes, uh, both on the top of the trunnion and on the bottom. And for that, again, I have a new set of polyterrain bushes. In fact, only for the top it's polyterrain. On the bottom part is just a new sleeve and some rubbers and some washers and spacers. And you'll see that in a few seconds. Uh, changing that is very simple. The trunnion is still quite all right, so I don't need to do anything on that. So let's start on that. And this still looks fairly intact, but um, I'm still gonna replace it while I'm working at it. There's not much to it. Inside, you will find a steel bush, and I will push it out this side, see? And sometimes that gets worn. Um, there is a greasing nipple on the other side, right there. And if you look inside, you will see the greasing channel. Uh, so I'm gonna try to clean this out a little bit and then we'll put the new parts up. Clean it out a bit on the inside. If you look carefully, you might actually see grooves inside and that's to bring the grease from the greasing nipple all the way throughout this bush here. This is the new steel tube that goes inside. And you might want to check it if you have play and this feels really good. So I'm gonna grease that up slightly. Not that you have to because if you put grease through the nipple it will completely be greased by itself. But still, I always like to put some grease up front. Uh, it never hurts, right? All right, there we go. The other part that needs to be connected is a rubber bush and that goes on like so and this has to go over this edge so keep that in mind. Uh, so let me see if I can stretch that on there and of course it's gonna slide the whole time in front of the camera. Okay that's on. It's a little bit of fiddling but you can get it on at the end and I'll do the same on this side. Um, this went easier. And now you have two special washers and you need to put those up. And the way to do it is not like this. That's what you would expect, but it's this way, right? So, because it's gonna push that rubber in, into place, it's gonna hold it. And that will, and that 
metal piece actually grips inside the groove of the rubber. So sometimes things jump off when you do this, but uh, let's try and see if we're going to get it in. It can be a little bit of an annoyance to get these things in. But if you fiddle around with it, okay, so that is done. And then that's it. We are done with this. Now the bolt will go through with another washer, like so. But of course that will be caught uh, on the lower wishbone. A locking ring, the nut, and then we have this split pin that goes in afterwards, of course, in front of the nut, not behind it. So that's it for this part. Pretty easy, isn't it? I'm going to keep that a bit together because I'm going to grease that up a little bit. I just want to give it a bit of grease. I give it more grease once it's in the car, but you can see it's already coming out on the side here. So it is already still pretty full. So uh, we don't need to put more in. I hate greasy parts, so that's why you always see me cleaning parts uh, every time I do something. The top of the trunnion is connecting to the Costello suspension in my case. And you can see that these bushes really are cracked and worn out. And therefore I'm going to replace those with two polyethylene bushes. They go in like so from both sides. And in the middle, we've got a steel tube. Now these polyethylene bushes, just like all the others we have installed, they have kind of a hashing inside, a, a kind of a pattern inside. And you need to fill that up with special grease for polyethylene. Don't use other grease because you may destroy the bushes. I'm going to knock the second one out and I'm using the old bush from the bottom for that and a soft hammer. And hopefully we can knock them out. There we go. That's out. They are not really hard into it. So now we can install, once we clean it up a bit, uh, the new bushes in polyethylene. All right. So let's see if the bushes can go in. Yeah, they will just fit nicely. Look at the side of this old bush, how cracked that is compared to the new one. So we're going to fill now the bushes with the special grease and again I'm going to use my brush and here is that special grease and I'm just going to rub it at the inside so that the whole pattern inside is filled with this grease. I will try to put the tube in one bush. There we go. And then I'm going to put it in the top part of the trunnion and then we put the second bush up. I'm just putting some of that grease up so it, it slides in better. All right, so here's the first one. That will go in fairly easily, just by manual force. And now I need to put the other side in. And let me move the camera so you can see it. So this is a little bit more difficult, but not that difficult. I just need to squeeze things. All right, so that's it. Now, if you really want to squeeze it well together, just use a spanner or something like that. All right, we can now take it to the car and install it. So now we're going to try to install the upright. This is going to be a little bit of fiddling to find the bolt, but there it is. There we go. So that is in. I need to give it a tiny bit more because I can't get the split pin in and that must go in. All right, now hopefully it fits. Um,
I loosened up the Costello suspension a bit, so I have a, big, a bigger gap in the front here because I need to get the upright in. seems to go in nicely. So now we need to put the bolt through it and hopefully everything is all right. Uh, it feels like it. It's a bit tough to get it in, but uh, I use a soft hammer. There it is. And now we pull it to torque. And then we should be good. So now we need to bolt down the middle part of the Costello suspension and the rear part. And then uh, we'll install the brakes. The suspension is now in place and now it's time for the brakes. So we're going to put up the brake calibers and connect the brake hoses. Uh, and then we'll connect the tie rod of the rack and pinion. I did connect all the split pins and to secure all the nuts. So I've done that and I torqued everything down to the recommended torque. Uh, so now uh, there isn't a lot more to be done on this side. So let me get the brake caliber and we'll put it up. But before I'm putting the caliber up, I'm going to degrease the disc because we've been handling it quite a bit with dirty hands and grease. So you want to make sure that you have no grease on that. And for that, I'm using ordinary brake cleaner. And let me just wipe it clean. See how dirty that is? And of course, we also need to do the backside. Um, and my MGB also has modified disc brakes. Uh, they are vented disc brakes, and they have a four piston caliber on it. That's the tie rod from the rack and pinion and on the edge we'll need to install a ball joint and that will go right here in the upright. So I'm going to move the upright a little bit away and just bolt it on. You're just turning it on a couple of times and um, I know my steering rack is still in the middle. My steering wheel uh, is still in the proper position. So what I'm going to try to do now is to see more or less where or how far I have to put this ball joint in there. So I'm going to have a look on my upright, see if it's straight, more or less, and then I will try to match that up. Now, I can see that it's not 100% straight. And I think this is almost straight. I think I need to move it just a slight, a little bit out and I still need to turn it a bit, as you can see. Now the final adjustment will be when we do the wheel alignment, when we're going to correct the toe in. Turn that. All right, so let's see if we can get this installed. So now it's time to torque down the brake calibers uh, to the upright, and this is around 54 Newton meters. All right. So now it's time for the new brake pads and before I'm installing them, I'm going to put some copper paste on the back. And if you wonder what copper paste is, this is what it is guys. Pretty good stuff. It, it, it actually prevents a bit of squeak as well. Um, and I'm actually putting it here on the back of the pad so this guy can go in. There we go. In fact, it's not really grease. We call it grease, but it isn't grease. And now uh, we can put these little things through it, but I still need to have some supports there or some springs. Okay. So we will place these up there like so.
Okay, sorry guys that I was a bit in the way, but I had to push a bit, so uh, sometimes that's necessary. Okay, that's done. So the brake pads are in. So the next step is to connect the brake pipe here uh, to the hose. So let me pull the hose away and I'll take up this protection here because I put that up so I don't get any debris in it. And now I can feed it through the support here. And let's see. So connecting the brakes um, was a little bit difficult, the hose that is. Um, and now it's really tight, uh, but you can see how it's connected. But uh, trying to tape it while I was working on it uh, was a bit hard, so uh, that's why I couldn't show you that. But in essence, you just need to put the tube through the support, put a, a nut up, and then connect the tube coming uh, from inside the car, and then you're done. So folks, we have come to the end of this video and we have installed a lot of parts today. We installed the lower wishbone, we installed the Costello suspension, we also installed the upright and we changed the bushes in them, both on the top and on the bottom of the trunnion. We also have installed the brake caliber with a new brake hose pipe and we connected it all up to the system and we installed new brake pads and we have installed actually the pivoting point on the tie rods from the rack and pinion. So now we can already start steering the car. In essence, it's not aligned yet. That's for the next video. I still have to do the right hand side. All the same work. I'm not going to film this. Uh, it's going to be exactly the same method. And in the next video, which will be the last one, I will actually install the anti-roll bar, which is just a single bar and four bolts. And then we will do the actual wheel alignment. Thank you for viewing and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.